really have missed this. And the teaching too. Gosh, I missed it. I missed that kind of, that thing you cannot, you cannot replicate through a screen. Mm. You absolutely can't come close. It's like there's a huge component of it that's missing. I mean, on the one hand, technology has been our saviour to a certain extent over the last 12 months because much as I might moan about Zoom or Microsoft Teams, other platforms exist, dot, 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 much as I might moan about them and boy, I can rant. Without them, can you imagine it? You know, you know, frustrating as they have been as, as, as tools, just nobody would have had a violin lesson for 12 months. Nobody would have had a, you know, and so on and so forth. And, and there, are, there are colleagues of mine, some students of mine, some ex-students of mine, who have been brilliant running like 20, 30, 40 piece choirs over Zoom where they sit at some, I don't know quite how they do it, they sit at some synth and they, la 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 la. Can, I mean, can you imagine that 10 years ago? That would just, it, everything would have gone completely silent. There have been these, but um, yeah, there's, but despite all that, you know, there is a com component that, and it's to do with that, you use the word proximity. I don't even think it's to do with proximity. I, I think it's to do with energy. I do, I think it's to do with energy. I talk to my conducting students about energy. You know, it's about some, I don't know, Tai Chi flow of energy. I mean, that's what conducting is, ultimately, when you boil it all down to all the, you know, subdivide here and give a better upbeat and buy a shorter baton or, you know, don't look at the horns. You know, it's about energy. It's about the flow of energy. And it's like, I don't know, Qigong, like uh, pushing hands and all the rest of it. No one's leading, no one's following. And it's like a great string quartet. You can't, you can't sense that anything like as well through a screen. You can't. It's, it's missing. It's a key component that's missing. Put it in the room and suddenly you've got that connection. I don't know what it is. It's that magical thing that we all have missed and that enables live art and live music to thrive. And I wonder if there have been so many tragedies in the last 18 months, let's be honest, haven't there? I mean, let's not even begin talking about them. There have been so many tragedies and all the rest of it. But I wonder if some of the benefits has been this restorative next thing that, that we're all able to sit back and go, hang on, who am I as an artist? Who am I as a musician? Where have I been as a musician for the last X years? Now I've got this space, right? What does my musical life mean? But also, it gives such an, a refreshed context for what music making is, what collaborating is, what rehearsing is, what learning is. It gives everything a totally refreshed context. And I think that that's incredibly fascinating. And despite the kind of the landscape of people cancelling concerts and this not happening and you know people being let down and uh, at the last minute which i totally get and, and, and all the rest of it um i am actually quite excited about the future because i hope that we as a human race and as musicians can carry some of that positivity forwards into our music making for years to come maybe i'm being naive but you did answer the question, yes. Yeah, gosh, I, I, I took about an hour and a half answering the question. So I'll, I'll, I'll try, I'll try not to, oh, we'll see. Good luck with no, that. No, 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 it's, uh, it's, it's interesting what you said about energy rather than proximity. Before I ask the next question, I want to ask this. Do you think that energy is charisma or not? Musical charisma? I think musical charisma is part of that part of bigger, bigger energy. And I think somebody who... See, charisma is such a weird thing, isn't it? And I'm, I'm no body language expert. Far from it, can't you tell? Uh, uh, I'm no stage presence guru. Um, you know, I still get criticized for the way I bow on stage. Um, not very often. <laughs> but I mean, you know, I, not all the time. Uh, you know, it's not like there are people in the audience going, oh, gosh, don't bow like, no. But just every once, people say, why do you bow like that? Also, I, 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 ultimately, I don't care. I, you know, I, I don't care. But I'm not too concerned about my 
I mean, I, I am concerned about the stage shenanigans of who you shake hands with or elbow bump with uh, and in what order and, 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 and forgetting to stand up the solo horn player and all the rest of it. That's important. Um, but that charisma thing, um, I mean, it's difficult in a way, isn't it? Because I suppose it does go into that camp of things which can't be taught, hmm. arguably. And I suppose things like energy and charisma are things that arguably can't be taught. Although I think that those things are not manipulable, um, I mean, in a good way, not some Machiavellian way. I think, I think they're thing, they are things that can be encouraged or improved hmm. through the work of a good coach, a good mentor, a good teacher. Uh, or, 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 or increasing your self-awareness as a human, as a musician. You know, if I was really obsessive about it, I would w w video every single one of my concerts and watch how I bow at the end, you know, and go, oh, yeah, I see, I do that funny thing with my shoulder or something. Um, and I, I've been through, you know, thousands of hours analysing my conducting using videotape and, you know, mostly spent going like this, going, oh... Gosh, why? And and so on. And I try to fix things, and they do. They get fixed, and it's kind of a, a process of you know two steps forwards, one step back. But that's not about charisma. Um, I think. I mean, I think charisma. I mean, it's it's the actor, isn't it? It's the it, it, it's it's a kind of enabling of a. I think it's. It's allowing oneself to make the, the, the window, if you like, between what's inside and what people are looking at as transparent as possible. Um, and I think a lot of it is sometimes it's artifice. You know, I think a lot of it is manufactured. A lot of it is, I, not, you're not going to use the word false because that's not true. I think a lot of musicians' great charisma there's a part of that that's, you know, not, not showboating, but it's, it's created, you know. I mean, there's some great conductors or great performers who've been unbelievably shy human beings. You see them being interviewed, and they, it's not, not that their English is bad, for example. They can't, they don't want to put more than three or four sentences together, unlike me, <laughs> currently in this uh, diatribe. But it's because they're naturally um, shy and quiet. And yet on stage, they, they inhabit probably a similarly quiet and shy universe, but boy, they can make music. Boy, they can inspire others. Um, and that's their charisma. I think a lot of performers' charisma is often, it can be quite obvious. It can be quite showy. I generally can't stand that kind of performer's way of kind of o overly showy. You know, and I'm, I'm I'm not talking about the Liberanches of this world or the Andre Rieu. Um I think actually they 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 are or were, or were or whatever way around. <laughs> they 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 were and are um, great at what they do. It's a market. They're very good at it. Um, you know, Liberace was had I mean had a superb pianist's touch in some ways. You know, um, it's absolutely fascinating to listen to him. But yeah, I mean he was showy and then some. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you know, the more uh, mainstream classical artists who I think what I'm more interested in than charisma is authenticity and honesty. And I find when I listen to either some of my students perform or I, w or, or I hear and watch other artists, I, th I think it's really easy if you surrender yourself I think it's re not necessarily easy, but it, 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 it's a skill that we can learn as listeners. I can tell when somebody's lying to me. I can tell when somebody's um, spinning out some bullshit. And I think that what, what I crave in a performance is authenticity. So if I'm sitting at the keyboard and I'm playing some Beethoven, I'm not suggesting that when I'm hammering away in C, C minor, you know, furioso, that, that I am genuinely furious and that I have, you know, some demonic wish to destroy part of this Steinway. 
Of course it's not. And you're actually a pianist, so you know what that... Or, or when I'm conducting Mahler, I, I don't actually think that, you know, the world is going to end or that I'm experiencing love beyond the horizons of anything I've encountered before. Although those two things, among, you know, amongst thousands of others, are things one can sense and experience in Mahler. I don't feel that. Not, not really deep down. You know, I might look to the bra section like I am pretty cheesed off with them. But, you know, I'm not. It's like it's being an actor. But I think there's a kind of authenticity in being an actor up to a point. I think when it stops being, you know, authentic... I think good, honest, incredible, authentic music making is that's uh, that's the secret. It's quite hard to find, and I think that's what charisma is. That's real charisma mm. in the recording studio or or live. Mm. And I think, yeah, I think to a certain extent that does get lost a little bit through a screen. It can't not. Mm. That's interesting because when I was when I said the word charisma, my mind automatically automatically drew up an image of a very extroverted, flamboyant, showy person. But after hearing you, I think charisma is not just that. It can be um, authenticity and being honest with your work and touching people with your music as well. Yeah. And having that stage presence. Yeah. Although be, being still being shy and introverted, you can still be quite charismatic. I mean, just uh, just off the top of my hat... Uh, off, off, is that a phrase? <laughs> out, out of my hat, off the top of my head, off the top of my hat. <laughs> it's, it's a little Irish. Um, no, uh, whatever the phrase is. Uh, Claudio Abado, f for example. You know, um, I, think, uh, you know I, I met him only a couple of times. Uh, every time I met him, he was incredibly generous to me. Um, I gate crashed and I was lucky enough to gate crash quite a few of his rehearsals I learned an enormous amount even though he didn't do very much he was renowned for not really doing very much in rehearsals he wasn't like uh, Maris Janssens who I well I suppose Maris Janssens is another great example um, but uh, Abado you know you would never have described him as being some extrovert musician uh, he was a magician not an not an extroverted musician um, but you know even if you didn't agree with every one of his interpretative choices or nuances or or, or so on I, I I'd be troubled about why if, 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 I, if, if I'm honest because it was it's always so incredibly subtle um, why anyone would be troubled by his inter anyway um, he just had this humility and this authenticity that would come out and this genuine, you know, I mean, I still remember to this day, and I'll never forget it, perhaps the greatest concert I ever went to was when the Berlin Philharmonic came to the Royal Festival Hall, oh, decades ago. I Was it their first visit to the festival? I can't remember. But it, it was, I think, well, it was Marla 9 and it was a bardo and I had seats, I had a seat pretty much right behind the, the percussion. I think it was on the front row of the choir in the festival hall. And I was a kid. I mean, by kid, I mean I was 20, maybe 21. And I was sitting there, and uh, I'd never seen him live. I, maybe I had. I think I, 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 mean, I think I saw him uh, Brahms' second piano concerto with Brendel, followed by Marla IV. I think that was their proms debut, maybe a year before. You'd have to check the annals of the archives. But, you know, Brahms' second piano concerto with Brendel and Marla IV, I think, uh, was the Berlin Philharmonic Proms debut with Abado. And I remember Abado had to walk out onto the stage alone after the audience all went. I remember they did an encore of uh, Rossini. Was was it William Tell? And they brought a trombonist just 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 for that. I, I, I can't even remember. It may not even have been Rossini. But Abado came because the, 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 the applause just wouldn't stop. But anyway, about a year later or something, at Festival Hall, Marla 9, 
So it wasn't the first time I'd seen him, but it was the first time. And I was just, I, I, I think I barely blinked for the 90 odd minutes of Marla, Marla 9. And watching Abado and that orchestra, even though the sound picture is completely wrong, you know, you know when the cymbal clash is coming because you're standing right behind the cymbal player who's been kind of getting ready for about 15 bars. But, you know, I ended that performance, or after that performance, I was deeply certain of two things. One, how stunned I was. I still had fingernail imprints in my inner arm f the fo following morning. I had no idea how I'd been in this kind of like trance. And the second thing uh, I was struck by was I, I just thought to myself, wow, that's, that's what it's like up there at the, at the kind of at the pinnacle of the profession.